So there's, a, as I mentioned, a, a feedback mechanism whereby folks can look at all of our data. Uh, I have to take issue with some folks that suggest that we're mismanaging natural resources. That is directly my department. We have uh, Nick Sabatine here that has uh, sponsored this breakfast this morning from Ransom Environmental. Uh, certified geologists like uh, Nick and others uh, at Woodard and Curran and different companies around the state of Maine have their professional reputation on the line in taking these water levels for a company like Poland Spring. I don't take it very uh, lightly when folks suggest that we're mismanaging a resource because all that data is out there. Uh, every month, month after month, for folks to uh, explore and look at, and we have nothing to lose, uh, we have nothing to gain from, from mismanaging the resources. Uh, in total, our water use, use, uh, use in the state of Maine is about 0.4% of the water used in the state of Maine. Would you believe that? <laughs> we seem to be in the press uh, quite a bit, but for 0.4%, for if you take all of our water use from all nine sites in the state of Maine, that equates to about seven-eighths of an inch off the top of Sebago Lake. So a very, very small amount of water. I talked about how much water we get uh, in the state of Maine. Uh, for every acre, we get about 1.1 to 1.2 million gallons per acre. So we could essentially run our business off about 600 acres of land in the state of Maine, um, but we don't. We uh, actually spread it out to about five to 6,000 acres in, in, uh, in size and much larger in watershed size. So where does all this water come from? We saw it last night come down as rain and snow. When you add up how much rain and snow we get in the state of Maine during the course of the year, we come up with a number that's very, very large and unfathomable. 24 trillion gallons of water uh, fall on the footprint of the state of Maine each year. About, um, depending on the climate conditions during the summer, uh, we lose probably about 20 to 30 percent to evapotranspiration off the surface of leaves and uh, grasses. Uh, we had a lot of runoff last night, I'm sure of. Uh, we lose about 50% of our water to runoff, and a, another 10, 20%, depending on where you're at and how hot the summer is, actually evaporates right off the surface of the earth uh, and off of uh, lakes like Sebago Lake. Uh, I mentioned that our, our water use around the state is about 7 eighths of an inch off the, Sebago, off the top of Sebago Lake, but if you take just July evaporation on Sebago Lake, you could run five Poland Spring businesses just on the evaporation off the top of Sebago Lake in one summer month. Uh, to give you a, a try, trying to give you a sense of the water cycle with these large, large numbers, I hope that example hits home with you a little bit. Uh, what's left uh, is about 10 to 30 or more percent uh, in the water cycle that actually can infiltrate <coughs> down into the groundwater and feed the water table in the places that we work. So this uh, rain and snow last night, you can see why it woke me up with a smile. Uh, it's part of our business, and it's what infiltrates into the ground and produces our springs. This is what it looks like in Kingfield at one of our spring sites. Uh, we had use all sand and gravel aquifers in the state of Maine. The deepest one is uh, in probably Freiburg, about 100, 110 feet deep. Most of our sources are less than 100 feet deep. And we uh, rely on those sources to provide nice, clean, uh, fresh-tasting water in these spring areas. Uh, this is one of our uh, cross-sections through like the Kingfield uh, area where we have uh, many of those monitoring wells, uh, one of which I showed you on the previous slide, that are monitored each month. In the case of Kingfield, the DEP actually had us install a sentinel well program which actually surrounded the site with wells, much like a fence. And you monitor wells uh, in these, uh, you monitor water levels in these wells uh, every day. And actually, they have devices that go off every four hours. And we do the same thing in Hollis as well. So for nine years in Hollis, we've had uh, water level devices going off every four hours. It produces a, a very large Excel spreadsheet. Uh, but what it shows you in the case of Hollis or in the case of Kingfield is that we're not having adverse impacts uh, on these aquifers. In the case of Hollis, water levels are actually rising over the last four or five years uh, with the introduction of the plant and, um, and the growth in, in the Hollis factory. Uh, could anybody maybe suggest you know why water levels are rising, Steve, when you have uh, a Poland Spring factory that's uh, growing and uh, producing lots of water? Just fathom a guess. <laughs> it's because of that rain. Uh, we've been getting, uh, as you guys know, we haven't had the best summers. Last summer was, I think, you know, six out of eight weekends was rain. 
and uh, it's been hurting our tourist industry a little bit and our canoe industry up on the Saco. Uh, that rain is basically what is controlling water levels. It's not controlled by withdrawal. It's coming down from the rain, rapidly recharging these aquifers uh, in the places that we work. If I'm doing my job responsibility and the responsibly and the company's investing wisely in these resources. You don't spend a half a billion dollars uh, for uh, poor reasons. Uh, folks want to have um, your investments to be sound and if we're picking the right places um, they, they can be sound well into the future. We want to be here 160 years into the future as well. A couple of points of environmental leadership and then I'll let you guys go. I know you have to uh, get back to work here. Um, we've been doing uh, quite a few programs on the environmental leadership side. We've been recycling in our factories. Uh, we've up over 91% recycling of the waste streams in our factories. That's the corrugate plastics uh, that are used inside the factory. Uh, packaging we've been reducing as well. Our bo plastic bottles today are, are the lightest weight uh, bottle that you can find and I believe the healthiest bottle you can find as well. So it's the lightest of all bottles and the healthiest of all beverages, I believe. We're down to um, just over 10 grams in our bottles. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Uh, we're also building our new factories like Kingfield to be LEED certified, and that's a great commitment to the environment as well. Uh, you might know that Hannaford's also building a, a LEED um, grocery store in Augusta this year as well. So uh, transportation is another big part of our environmental effort. We started using biodiesel a few years ago. It's non-food-based biodiesel. And uh, it's actually increased our uh, miles per gallons in the trucks, believe it or not. And it's been uh, a good partnership. We've been able to bring in biodiesel to the state of Maine better. Oakhurst Dairy is now using it. The price for biodiesel has gone down as a result of that use and the demand for the product. So other companies are using it. I hear that LLB might be considering uh, picking it up on some of their trucks as well. So uh, good news travels uh, throughout Maine and other folks will be able to use that as well. Uh, one of the biggest things we've been doing for about eight years now is lightweighting our bottles. Uh, in order to be competitive in the um, Northeast and to compete with uh, folks like Pepsi and Coke is one of our biggest challenges is trying to reduce our raw materials. It's good for the environment as well. Uh, we've been reducing our plastic consumption uh, in these bottles and we're down to about 12 and a half grams in an EcoShape bottle now. Uh, coming next year, we're going to produce the, uh, the son of EcoShape bottle, which will be a sub 10 gram <laughs> bottle. And we're actually uh, trialing this bottle in Hollis today, uh, this summer. And uh, it takes a lot of engineering and good main, um, main folks to, uh, to put their heart and soul into these machines, actually, and produce those bottles at a very, very light weight. If you look at a carbonated soft drink bottle like a soda, uh, Coke, or a Pepsi bottle, they're up near uh, 20 to 28 grams. It takes extra plastic to hold the carbonation in. So when you're buying a soda bottle, you're not only getting the excess calories, you're also buying two to three times more plastic. A uh, Gatorade bottle has three times the plastic of one of these EcoShape bottles. So I wanted to uh, basically leave you with that. I know many of you folks have uh, agencies that you work for or rotaries um, in York County as well. I'd be happy to uh, offer uh, you know, speaking engagements to you as well. Uh, in the future. We'd like to get uh, more positive information about our company. We'd like to change this recharge situation, the rain we got last night, into more main jobs. But we have to reduce the amount of misinformation out there in order to do that. And we can continue to grow responsibly in the state of Maine and produce great jobs for Mainers if we can all be open-minded and uh, look forward to the future. So I'd be happy to stick around for questions afterwards. And I thank you all for coming out today. We uh, certainly appreciate you coming today, and in recognition of your visit, uh, we're going to uh, provide the library upstairs a book in your name. Great. Um, and uh, again, Mark mentioned that he'd be happy to stay around uh, and answer questions for anybody who would like to come up and talk with an individual. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. Good to meet you. The tradition in this breakfast meeting is to have a question and answer period.
and that YCCS was told that there wouldn't be enough time that he had that Mark had to leave and the other representatives had to leave. Oh, I can't answer that. Of course you can't. No. But it's Nor kind of could obvious. you answer the facts that the DEP has on all the water extraction either, so you need to get some facts as well.